This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Okay, but anyhow, so let's start up with this live TV radio talk for media K4 HD radio streaming worldwide TV network IT 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee. And let's get going. So it's 222222, the highest vibration of our lifetimes, which is actually really good. So I'm gonna have everybody introduce themselves because I don't know how I sound, but I think it's okay, but I'm just not gonna rely on it. So, Tosh, tell us where you're coming from and who are you. And let's talk about where you were two weeks ago. Ooh, yes. Okay, so my name is Natasha Brumbos, or as many people call me Tosh. I'm a little bundle of joy. And um, <laughs> where I come from, I live in Miami. And uh, two weeks ago, I was in beautiful Los Angeles living my best life with everyone on this, uh, on this show, except for Rachel. We were missing you, Rachel. But we were with Amy, with Terry. We were having such yes. a great time, and it was Super Bowl week, and we 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 did a lot of great things. And Bubble Huts was literally the most amazing asset in this place that we were at. Right, Terry? Yes, it Absolutely. was, and it was absolutely. A, oh, go on. Um, I was going to say, are no, you gonna go ahead, Terry. Brian? <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. I'm Terry Marie. No, no, I'm going to have everybody do themselves. Okay. Out of Redondo Beach, California, um, and I've been a co-host with Brian for about seven years now. I'm thinking it's seven years. Uh, so we had the opportunity to uh, do a live event finally, and I finally got to meet Tosh in person, which was exciting because I'm like, oh, you're a real person, right? So she had said the same thing, and we got to do. And I got to do. I got to do my interviewing in the bubble huts. And that was so much fun. Amy had a great acoustics in there. I wanted just to yeah. say that. And it was it was kind of like you could hear your voice. I I, I think it made um, my voice a lot stronger. Yeah. <laughs> it amplified. Sense. Yeah, it was amplified. And then we had the Skosh uh, air purifier in there, which I just want to give a shout out to Skosh because I'm personally using one in my bedroom right now. I have allergies and asthma, and I'm sleeping a lot better. So when I think I want to thank them for for being a sponsor also. But yeah, we had a blast, and then we went to um, Babes and Ballers. Um, Super Bowl, pre-Super Bowl party in Hollywood. Um, that was a fantastic event. And we had a great time, didn't we have Tosh? We got to dance oh, yeah. and we got to see see little, little, little John. Uh, oh yeah, we did. We were rock and roll in there. I mean, you guys had more fun than I did because you guys got home like at five in the morning, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. I think Tosh had fun, don't you, Terry? We all had fun, yeah. I mean, I just hadn't seen a lot of people that uh, in a long time that were at that party, you know, because it was, you know, a lot of people I've known for years that were uh, at the Babes and Ballers. And so, you know, Brian and I went to a little after hours party at my friend's house. And now it was, it was a long night. It was a long day, a long night, but it was really fun. So, and now we're heading off to go to Film Festival. I don't the know, International that, Film Festival. Yes. So yes, but uh, but before I do that, let's go to Amy, and All then right. we're gonna go to Rachel. Okay. 
Okay, I'm so Amy, Amy Kaiserman. Let's tell us yes. who you are for the audience that doesn't know. <laughs> okay, I'm Amy Kaiserman. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. I am the creator of the brand and the product Bubble Huts. Um, and I was with all of them as well in LA. It was a lot of fun. I got to share the bubbles with them, you know, and it, it's so cool because it was the first time I actually got to experience it where I got to see the people in it and excited about it. Cause usually I'm shipping these all over the world, but to finally see it firsthand experience with other people, it was awesome. I'm glad you guys liked it. <laughs> Yeah, we all wanted mini. Well, mini it was the, it was the hit, home. and I knew it would be. <laughs> well, and also the thing like, about that is, uh, it was a viral cleanse. Uh, Scotia is coming today, but it was a viral cleanse. Uh, the songs. Terry has one. I have one. Actually, Amy's got one. Amy, did you plug yours in yet? I haven't used it yet, but I want to say one thing is everybody and even myself went that in the bubble tent, it felt fresh. The air mm -hmm. felt fresh overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I liked that a lot. I wasn't, you know, I was surprised because I didn't know if I would notice a difference because I've been in and out of the bubbles before, but I was like, oh, this, this is fresh air. It doesn't mean, you know, it smells clean. It, there's no, you know, chemicals at nothing. It was just like you felt like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I think sometimes when you get into closed and speaking environments, of that. oh, I was just gonna say something about closed environments. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Terry. Uh, yeah, when you're in closed environments, a lot of times the air it feels stale. If that makes yeah. sense, that's the best way to explain it. So just to add on to what you were saying, yeah, that there was no like stale air, like icky air in there. You know what I mean? So it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And then so okay, Rachel, right, you went, you didn't get a chance to come, but, mm -hmm. but you've been cooking. And I want to know what you've been cooking yes. because Texas has got something big going on now, right? Talk about that. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so yeah, this if, <laughs> if you're watching and you're in Texas, I don't need to say it, but like outside of Texas, this is like a really exciting time of year for us. Um, it's rodeo season and it's um, crawfish season and, and all these fun things are happening. We've got the trail riders coming in. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun stuff going on. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm Rachel Roberts. I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm a home chef, and I do cooking videos and um, little morning coffee videos and things like that. So it's, it's, yeah, that's what I do. Sorry, I missed you guys. <laughs> I would have loved to gone out there. There definitely will be more. So, <laughs> Brian is taking all. No, of that's the okay. Board. That's what's going on. That's okay because what I'm planning. Brian, please again. Well, we are. We're all <laughs> going to meet in Nashville, Tennessee in May. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe even Roxy can come. No. <laughs> I said maybe even Roxy can come to Tennessee in May. Yeah. Da, 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 da. You know, <laughs> so anyhow, so Tosh. Yeah. <laughs> So, Tosh, talk about what's going on with you, what your experience is like when you left to go back to Miami, because that's strange when you go back to after having so much fun, right? Yeah, I mean, I was there for five days, so it was weird to get back into the routine of things. I came back, and I was like, oh, I have to go to work now. I have to, like, oh, do customer service. Oh, my God. Like, I was so used to, like, going out to restaurants, having fun, exploring. So it was a rough transition, but, you know, now I'm back at it. I'm, I'm back in my routine. Um, I am filming my next music video in two weeks, so I'm super excited about that. And um, yeah, I've been really busy, like getting outfits, uh, learning the choreography <clears throat> for my new music. So it's, there's a lot going on, but I'm happy. And my birthday is next Thursday. So there's a lot of things Happy birthday. Happy, birthday. happy birthday. birthday. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, for everyone who's listening, I just wanna, you know, Brian is lagging a little bit. So he is like a few seconds behind, mm -hmm. um, just to keep that in mind for you guys that are listening. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm honestly, I'm ready for, I'm ready for the next thing, and um, just working on. Oh, actually, actually, last week, right when I came back from LA, I was just so pumped from like Super Bowl and like you know the performances that were at this um, at the Super Bowl event that we did on Thursday. That I did, I went to an open mic last week.
week and it was so cool uh, a lot of great you know new artists that i met and you know i just he i'm just singing singing every week singing every week wherever i get a chance that's right, actually pretty good second. we like that <laughs> so so rachel talk about yes. What you made, why we were in California. Okay. What were you making? Because you're making something every night. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm excited too. I um, have crawfish etouffee. Uh, so yeah, you can see the little crawfish, crawfish sticking out of it. Delicious. And you see crawfish? And I think go to New Orleans. Mm. Yes. Well, you know, we have that Louisiana is so close and we have a, there's a huge, you know, group of people here from Louisiana and New Orleans. So we've got a cute, there's little crawfish. Oh, I love crawfish. <laughs> and I wanted to share something else with you. So like, I'm my little motto is, you know, eat clean so you can drink a little dirty. Well, every now and then you still have to give your body a break on, on drinking too. So um, I wanted to share something new with you. Um, this is something I found, it's called Apollos. I, I do not work for them. I just think it's that cool. But it's a hemp infused beverage and you can make cocktails mm. with it. So like today I thought, okay, I'm gonna make a clean cocktail with lemongrass and lemon. And it's got two ounces of apollos and four ounces of tonic. So you would, it's like you're making oh, wow. an alcoholic drink, but it's got no alcohol. So every now and then it's good to like, <laughs> you know, give your body a break, do something, you know, a little different. And so that's what's happening today. It's fun. And you know, I like it. it it's kind of, I was afraid it was going to be a little too much, but it's not. It's like, it just, you drink it and it feels like you've had a glass of wine. It just, you just feel, you know, what's, a little it, what's out. in it? What's it? What's nice. in it? What's in it, Rachel? Oh, um, it's okay. So Apollos, uh -huh. And two ounces of that, and four ounces of tonic, fresh lemon, mm -hmm. and um, the the it's got a um, salted uh, tahini rim, and mm -hmm. and here is is uh, lemongrass from my garden. Every day when I cook, I, I include something from my garden in my mm -hmm. crawfish etouffee. I've got peppers, hatch peppers that I grow, and. Um, lots of onions. It's important that you do that. It's, mm -hmm. You see it. Sort of. I'm always imagining your garden and I just like picture it picture as like just like a bunch of like beautiful fruits and vegetables all over and you're just there like, oh, which one should I get today? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I imagine you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you got it spot on. <laughs> yep, so I pulled the little tail off. I mean, I know that a lot of us know how to do this, but sometimes people don't, right? So you just crack it and I you want to get that tail. You and this don't. is what he's showing Cooper. I can. My little, my little son, uh, Cooper, he's just turned seven. And there's, you'd want to take the little poopy out. <laughs> oh yeah. That, you <laughs> don't eat that. And then you just got the little tail. I make a fantastic little dippy sauce. Mm. Oh wait. And then if you're like, you know, a hardcore, Texan, or I guess from Louisiana, gotta suck the head. Mmm. Ooh, that's the way to I do it. I felt that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's. Wait, so you're hey, saying I that like Apple's that. That's delicious. does not have? Sorry. No, man. Mean, no liquor. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so you, <laughs> it's crazy because if you know me, like every day, I like I'll make a meal. Lunchtime, I got my cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought a couple days ago, I bought this Apollos, like, I don't know, a couple months ago, and it's just been sitting here. And a couple days ago, I finally opened it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And I went all day. I didn't have a drink. And I had a glass of this Apollos. And it was nice. It's it's kind of like you every now and then you just want to, like, you know, they had dry January. You want to take a break. You want to do something a little different. I'm digging it. <laughs> you know, you make it just like a cocktail and it has by itself, like I tried it on the rocks and then by itself, it's not bad, you know, just with like ice, mm -hmm. it's got like citrus flavors and, um, but it's a, it's hemp. 
you know, everything is hemp right now. So it's got mm -hmm. hemp in it, which is relaxing, I guess. Yeah. It's good for your antioxidants. Yeah. If it's CBD, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember having them anymore? What? What? We couldn't oh, I was, right. I was asking Amy, do you remember, Amy, do you remember half the people that you met at the gathering? Um, yeah, some of them. I mean, there was a ton of people I can't remember. I remember faces. I'm good with faces. I'm going to have to figure out, send photos to everyone. Who's this? Who's that? Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely remember um, Terry interviewing Robert De Niro in the bubble hut. That, <laughs> yeah. that is playing vividly in my head ever since like, I was like, <laughs> And then I asked him, oh, hey, can you record me while she's interviewing me? Aww. <laughs> yeah. He was super nice. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever he was. <laughs> he was uh, Robert De Niro's impersonator. <laughs> he was pretty good at it. <laughs> even my mom was like, oh, my God, I told everybody. I'm like, oh, mom, I didn't even know. My bad. <laughs> yeah, but how many, how, many people, how many people thought it was really Robert? I can tell it wasn't really him right away. You know, I mean, we're at Madame we're at, you know, the Wax Museum, and that, you know, that's kind of big. I think that they have the impersonators there all the time, don't they? Or, or I thought that was that they did, but I might be wrong. I'm just thought. <laughs> you did not know. What? I, I thought that they had the impersonators there. I mean, they've got the wax statues. It would just make sense that they would have the impersonators no. there. No. No, I wanted them to come. Oh, okay, I thought. I, no, I wanted them to come. I we couldn't hear you, Brian. You faded out for so the first time. Must... All right, you moving to out. Amy. Amy, so what is what is next after I, this? Everything that happened. What is next? For friends. You? Nope, they're my <laughs> friends. I wanted to surprise people. <laughs> Okay, do you want Amy, me to answer? but it was nice to have them in your hut, wasn't it? It was. It was yeah. nice to definitely to have everyone. And actually, I enjoyed watching Terry interview everyone. I said it was. I said I was it was. I that, said it was know, nice it was... to have her, her, them, in her hut. Right. Brian yeah, and I was glad times. we were able to air condition it as well. Because mm -hmm. it would have been hot if not. <laughs> But with, were you wanting to know what was next with me? I think. Yes. Oh, okay. or like, what do you have in the works or, you know, anything that we can do? Yeah, about? right now I'm actually working on doing some programs with my product line. So I'm, I've been talking to um, different groups, like for investor groups, also with corporate boards, things in that nature. So trying to take it to the next level corporate is where I'm at. That's awesome. It's always like when you mm -hmm. when you're when you're with like uh, your brand, you always want to have the next step and always want to grow. As long as you are growing and not, you know, exactly. Uh, that going the whole back, premise too. That's what's important. Yeah, exactly. And I like to grow. I like the challenge. You know, I'm, I'm I have big dreams, big goals. So it's exciting to be able to go to the next level. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you'll get there. You'll get there. You have so much passion and so much drive and, and you're like very passionate about, you know, your brand. So that's, you're definitely going to get there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Terry, so, when are you going to come to Miami? When am I going to come? Well, I, when is everybody going to come visit me? <laughs> I would, I would love to come to Miami. My cousin lives in Miami. I have some dear friends that live in Tampa. Um, I went, actually, I think I told you for my birthday, not this year, last year, like actually during COVID, I went to Florida and I visited my friends in Tampa, which was kind of interesting, um, to travel at that time, <laughs> so, but it was a little bit I, uh, more open than, uh, it was always been more open than California. So, but, uh, our next trip is, uh, the film festival in Wisconsin, which I fly into Chicago. Hey, Thursday Amy. Night. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Brian's struggling. <laughs> he got booted out. <laughs> oh, no. He got thrown um, out. <laughs> I, yeah. 
so yeah, Ryan's having technical difficulties. He's having an issue with his laptop. So we were kind of pre warned that this might happen. <laughs> so so I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask uh, Natasha a question. So what are you looking forward to in at film festival? Have you been to a film festival before or is this your first one? I, I'm actually not going to this one because it oh, was. Oh, you're not it going was, to this one. No, okay. I wish, but it was just, like too complicated because it was just too close to the LA trip. But I uh -huh. will be there for the Nashville one. Okay, yeah, you'll you'll really really enjoy that one. So, um, and then I guess I'm gonna ask. Ra I'll ask. Ra I'll ask Rachel a question while we're waiting for Brian okay. to come back. <laughs> so. Um, Anything new that you want to tell everybody? I know, you know, of course, you're talking about um, your meals and your dirty drinks, but is there anything else that you're wanting to work on for the new year? Because um, I know we're all talking about projects. So I just kind of want right. to ask you. No, it was so funny. I dream about mm -hmm. food every night. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Those are the best dreams. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you something else I've just started recently is um, cooking for friends. And that's that's really been taking up a lot of my time. You know, I was shooting these cooking videos and teaching people how to cook every day in my kitchen. And lately I've started this new adventure, cooking for friends. And so it's where I can share some of my recipes with some of the people that are, you know, local mm -hmm. around here. And it's kind of taking off. And I've, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me, when are you going to open a restaurant? When are you going to do this and, you know, expand it? But you never know. You know what I want to hear about, Amy, is I, I'm kind of late to the game and it's kind of hard to hear, but I want to hear, like, to explain these bubble huts. So where did, where do, they, where do people use these? How does it work? Okay, a bubble hut is actually a type of a glamping tent. So oh, okay. it, it looks like a bubble. I have, actually, I have some clients in Texas. So a lot of my people, uh, the guests, they would rent them out to guests on Airbnb, a Verbo, oh. glamping hub, things like that. So, wow. yeah. <laughs> you can see this. The, the stars. stars. It's all about sleeping under the stars without having to have the bugs, the dirt, none of. And are, you know. and they have heat inside and air conditioning. Heat, air condition. Right now, I'm working on a project with Canada where they're going to put um, bathrooms in them. So I put bathrooms. Oh, in oh them wow! Wow! And stuff, and they are heated, cooled, privacy walls, no privacy walls. You know what? I love you just it. So you were and, and the people you sell to are like maybe people that um, own properties and, yeah. and you know have um, some extra space. And yeah, right, right. Makes I, some I extra mean, revenue. Are you selling these all over the world? I imagine, like yeah, in really I cool do. places, like you know where they do. What is that called? That where you see this the sky and it turns green and it's oh the whole nice. Borealis. I, yeah. I don't even get there yet. I'm planning on it though. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, this is going to take you all over the world. Yeah. How cool! Yeah. I'm. I. It's funny because my company is more international. Yeah. Than it is actually. It's becoming more popular in the States, but it's very popular throughout the world. Well, good for you, girl. You. And when did Thank you start you. this? 2014. So I've been going at it for eight years. Wow. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking just now, I don't know why I thought of this. It'd be really cool to put a hot tub in one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people have done all kinds of yeah. things. You can only imagine. Yeah, I mean, I know. I just think it would be really cool to have a hot tub in one of those because, you know, if it's raining, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I, I've, I've been in a hot tub thousands of times, like in Mammoth, you know, like in the snow, but that would kind of be kind of cool too to put one in the snow. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Just an idea. I'm sure people come up with all kinds. Of, I mean, as you said, people come up with all kinds of creative ideas on, on how to use it, you know. Right. Yeah. What is the what is the biggest bubble hut that you have? I What's make it twenty five. It's twenty five feet. So oh, yeah. I've made it before. I've made one. Um, they had in the Super Bowl in Pittsburgh at the, not the Super Bowl, but the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've had made one for a company that did a themed environment inside of them. Uh -huh. I had one gentleman who got a twenty five foot to do a pop up gym inside oh, wow. his fitness. Wow. And uh -huh. stuff during COVID. So uh -huh. 25 feet so far is the largest. And that's, I mean, that's a pretty big space. You can make uh -huh. like a mini studio apartment in it um, uh -huh. at that rate. Yeah. I have a little small party with Rachel's you know dirty drinks. <laughs> 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 the greatest combination. Well, you know, you know what? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is that DJ Badash and Alex, her soon to be husband, were looking at. 
Yeah. That would be interesting. That'd be really cool to do, yeah, mini party in there. I mean, I could, I've thought about doing them at like outdoor festivals where they have the music festivals, like the Burning mm -hmm. Man or somebody said Coachella, you know, doing things Coachella. like that yeah. even. Mm -hmm. Yep. I even had yeah. that one rapper. Yeah, because at the Ash, end of DJ Badass, she's good. I was going to say, too, oh, you know ahead, that. Um, I can't remember the rapper's name, but he was in the bubble up in uh, at Madame Tussauds. And he was even talking about people doing parties in them and having them on top of like individual clubs and stuff. And they can make them into a chill VIP rooms. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> So Rachel wanted to know what's the wildest story you ever heard with someone using <laughs> one of your tents. The wildest, um, probably the food fight. I mean, really, I had a cosmetic company actually use it for an ad, but the, and this cosmetic company was all natural. They made their product out of natural foods and stuff. And so part of the campaign that they were doing was literally, I have to show you guys a photo, but it was food like all over and it looked so colorful on the inside after they were done with this <laughs> massive food fight in there. So that was probably the wow. craziest thing so far that I've heard of. <laughs> that sounds Talk like about fun. the process of putting it up and then taking it down. <clears throat> um, well, it depends on what they're using it for. Mm -hmm. The process if you're doing it for more of the glamping site, that can be, you know, that takes more if you're having plumbing, heating, cooling, and all that. But like for the event we were at, mm -hmm. that really wasn't too bad. It was like a couple hours, but mostly the hours were because we had to help get some of the wrinkling out because we use the natural sun and the heat of the sun to generally make it look like glass. But we had to cheat and make it happen like instantly as mm -hmm. much as we could. So that took the longest part, but to inflate <clears throat> the structure, I mean, once you have the structure, you know, um, secured to the ground, it only takes within five, 10 minutes max to inflate the whole entire thing. I always tell everybody it takes longer for us to decorate these than it does for us to install these. Mm -hmm. um, and then the takedown, it's like you just take the stuff out and you turn off the air system and it's down within minutes. You roll it up, you put it away. Wow. So, I mean, it just depends on what they're using because they're being used by the event and marketing industry a lot, and that's a lot simpler. But then again, the glamping is a lot more complex. And a lot of times my clients, they don't even take them down. They'll leave them up all year, depending on where they're located, or they'll leave them up nine months, eight months at a time. So they're sturdy. They're like, oh, yeah. yeah. What happens if a hurricane comes? <laughs> we well, I don't want to have a hurricane or a tornado. <laughs> like that. I don't want the Wizard of Oz over there going on. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> but they do sustain. I mean, they, they are one of those structures that performs very well in wind, though, being that it has the round shape. So there's no hard walls or corners for it to catch. But... Of course, I'm not going to tell you, oh, go stand out in a hurricane and one of these, you know, that kind of thing. You know, you've got to use common sense. What I always tell everyone is what you can do in a regular tent, feel free to do in my tent. I've had a regular tent come down on me. That was not fun. Really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that's kind of a funny story. Like in college, um, we used to go to Havasu. Like I was in a, a sorority and like we go to the fraternity. And, like, oh, you went to Lake Havasu. Havasu. That's why. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, because probably, you know, we were drunk putting the tent up, right? So I was with my friend when it yes, like, exactly. a storm, and the whole thing collapsed on me and my friend, and we're just like, oh, like laughing. I thought it was funny. <laughs> but like, college days. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were in a so sorority. What? Yes. I, I also was. was in a sorority in college. I was like, no wonder we get along so well. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a little sister to Super Kai. I was like, I was social chairman. Yeah, I was very active in the Greek system in, in college. And it was it was a fun time. I, I, had, I had a blast. I don't want to say what year I went. I graduated because that beat me. But anyway, <laughs> Cal, State alum, Cal State Long Beach alum, so. Hey, so Tosh and Amy, talk about going to Cute Booty. What was that like? Oh, that was fun. I liked it there. I got a pair of pants too. <laughs> They're comfortable, aren't they? Did you get yeah, I like them. They're so comfortable. 
Yeah, I love the whole layout. It was very, it's literally very cute. Like there's just so many cute, cute like places to take pictures. I was like, oh my God, Sophie here, Sophie here, picture that it's, I love the whole layout. I mean, and everything looks so like, you know, great quality. Um, there's so many like colors and so many like different designs. It's super cute. I really enjoyed my time there. Yeah, the pants are, very, are what you said are good quality. Um, they're they're very. Um, I mean, the materials is th there's a lot of I would say expensive leggings out there. They're just made cheap. Um, I mean, I've I've paid a lot of money for leggings that I just you know have fallen. Like these are just good quality. They're really cute on. They make your figure look great. Um, if, I think you know, and if you look at their um, Instagram, you can tell it's like you have heavier girls. But it says, you know, all sizes of girls wearing the pants and they look great on everybody. They yeah. just they just really compliment everybody. That's my thought. But anyway. <laughs> I mean they do I make the booty pop. Yep. <laughs> huh? What'd you say, Brian? I said I second that I, I second that emotion. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you have them on, let's see. Hey, so Rachel. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> No, yes. no, I'm going to take them to Wisconsin with me. Uh, are you going to wear them? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm going to wear them. I I'm can't like, wait to see those on you. I cannot wait. I need <laughs> pictures, okay? I need proof that this happened. Uh, <laughs> no, well, she makes them for guys now. He's not going to be wearing women's pants. <laughs> so, hey, so... Yeah. Hey, um... Hey, Rachel... Rachel wanted to know what got you started in the food business. How did you start your first one? How did that happen? Oh, okay. You're asking me. Okay. So, um, well, I'll tell you, you know, when COVID started, I, um, I was trying to stay connected to people. And so I started turning my camera on and I was doing little videos here and there, um, prayer groups for COVID and, and whatnot. And I've always had a love for cooking. So it didn't take long for, you know, the camera to come on in the kitchen and for me to start, you know, yabbering away about what I'm making. And um, I have a lot of uh, good ideas and in, in, in how to, I'm 48. And so, you know, I think it's, you know, sometimes people look at me and they're like, oh, you know, they're surprised that I'm 48. And I'm like, well, you know, I think it's real important that you're, you know, what you put in your body and that you're eating clean and um, taking good care of yourself. So, um, and I'm, I'm inspired weekly by, I'll tell you, um, I, I actually have some great friends, uh, fishermen and hunters that stop by weekly and bring me things that are freshly killed and cut mm -hmm. and caught. And, um, you know, like I had, um, a, a friend come over a couple of days ago, he brought me some deer backstrap and, um, deer boudin. Wow. So that's going to be a big inspiration mm -hmm. for next week's meals. Um, you know, I'll, I'll play around with that. Um, smoked reverse seared, um, you know, the back strap and, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, maybe some sausage, deer sausage boudin gumbo. So, um, but, you know, keeping it mm -hmm. local, keeping it fresh, keeping it, you know, those are, I think those are things that are important. Um, and always, you know, growing things and, and eating what you grow. It's it's good for your body. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's yeah, that's that's where I get inspired. What's local? I love to go to the markets and um, see what's fresh. I love colors, things that pop. And um, you know, when you're eating something that's good for you, uh, your body knows it. Your body tells you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think too many people out there they you know they eat things and sure they taste good, but you know when you afterwards. Mm -hmm. You don't feel right. You don't sleep well at night. Um, when you eat well and, and you know, also, uh, you know, something else I do, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I do intermittent fasting. So, um, you know, I don't eat or drink after five o'clock. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like me nibbling on this and having this drink is, is kind of a rare, <laughs> it's kind of a treat, I guess. But, you know, it, it keeps me from, um, you know, I sleep better at night and, um, you know, wake up feeling good and I'm healthy. So, well, what you're saying is true is like being in a fitness world and a fitness competition, doing fitness competitions that you always want to eat colors of different color fruits, mm -hmm. um, a wide variety of purple vegetables, your red vegetables, your green vegetables, but veggies are very important to us fitness people. So, mm -hmm. and, and good quality protein, grass fed protein. I mean, so I, I live by that. So, 
So I was going to ask you a question though about deer. Because uh, when I was growing up, my dad actually would hunt deer. Um, and I always found deer to be very gamey. Is there anything that you do to kind of make it less gamey tasting? Because I'm just not a fan of the. You know, that's that funny you asked me that. I was just yeah. reading something uh -huh. um, when I was pulling up the deer back strap, and it was, what did it tell me? Hmm. You know, I'll have to get back with you on that. But uh -huh. um, there is something that I just read about a week ago about, you know, if to take out the gaming. But I, you know, I never, I don't really need Some people to like it, you know? So it yeah. depends on your taste, too. I mean, i just not a big fan of it. And I was wondering if there's something that could make it, if they, it's just, a, I, I love lamb. Lamb is like one of my favorite, which some people think that's gaming. So I guess it's just a preference. So yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. But, you know, I, I cook all sorts of weird things like wild boar. <laughs> I mean, you know, because it's healthier. Did you know mm -hmm. that, like, have you ever looked up ground wild boar? The cholesterol is mm -hmm. lower. It's got, I think it's better in protein. It's, it's so like it's all around better for you in bison. And yeah, they, don't, they don't take gamey to me at all. Now, I don't know if, um, oh, look, somebody wrote soaking in buttermilk to take out the game. Yeah, that must oh, be okay, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. Somebody <laughs> does. <laughs> she knew. <laughs> Yeah, back to back to bison. It's about healthier than regular meat um, because I cut my red meat out closer to competition. And uh, bison is excellent for you. It's an excellent source of protein. It's got yeah, it's not much a lot better. of fat in it. Mm -hmm. And it actually buffalo to me tastes better than a buffalo burger. Tastes better than meat. Not buffalo. I mean bison tastes better to me than regular hamburger. Because the bison eat them. Yeah, they're yeah. so I good. I eat them for everything. Mm -hmm. Tacos and spaghetti mm -hmm. sauce, um, stuffed peppers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's it's much better for you, too. It's it's good stuff. And so is the wild boar. And next time you're at the uh -huh. store, you know, they're selling the wild boar now like they do the bison. Mm -hmm. I've never had boar, but I have. I mean, I eat bison all the time. So I'll, I'll check it out up here to see, see how that is. And if you could send me a recipe for it, I'll be happy to try it. Yeah. No, I mean, just use it in the, yeah. yeah, I will. But, you know, yeah, use it too. in place of um, ground beef. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it comes like, you know, all ground and you just use it. It, you, it yeah, doesn't taste any different. No gamey. We're going to have mm -hmm. bison on our ranch. I started reaching out to the people who sell bison, but they didn't want to release a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. But bison is going to be the, the, mm -hmm. the food of our choice on our Dreamweaver Artist Ranch. That's for sure. Good, because I love and, it. I can't get enough of it. Well, no, we'll have enough of it. But, but I've been reaching out <laughs> okay. the last three years. But also, Rachel is going to be cooking for us when we go to Tennessee. She's agreed. Yeah. And I said we will make it happen. <laughs> We're going to make it happen. Ooh, hey, We're going to have a master class with Rachel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to do that. That would be fun. Hey, is that include the Amy, you, you, Amy and your husband are coming with us too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting you in a magazine called Real Lemire, and I already talked to her. But you are busy moving. So that's what I've been setting up while you've been busy moving. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm ready. <laughs> And Tosh, you can still have your In-N-Out burger too. Talk about that. <laughs> oh wait, they have they have oh. In-N-Out in Nashville. I don't know. We have oh, them in Texas like, now. They have them in Texas. <laughs> they have them in Texas. <laughs> I literally <laughs> the first thing I did when I got to LA was go to an In-N-Out burger. That's where Brian met me. I was like, Brian, meet me at In-N-Out burger because this is the first thing I must do on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have they don't have In-N-Out in Florida. I didn't know that. No, it doesn't oh. exist here. <laughs> Do they have fat burger? Nope. They, and they, they don't have fat burger. They don't have water burger. I think that's, that's I think Texas. That's, yep, yep. They don't have that. I've heard of it, but I've never been to Texas and I've never yeah. tried it, but I've heard it's amazing. It is. It's good. You know. Just a burger. So that kind of stuff. It's not healthy. Well, <laughs> it's not as good as mine, but it's good. Well. <laughs> So, so, so sometime after, after Tennessee, we'll go, we'll create a special trip to Tennessee. Rachel, we're going to your house and you're going to make <laughs> us a piece. <laughs> and Amy, like and Brian. Amy's coming too. Okay. <laughs> I like how Brian just invites himself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm creating, no, 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 I'm creating the I'm party. I'm teasing you. Yeah. <laughs> See, Brian, Brian, Brian likes to tease me all the time. So it's my turn to tease him today. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, you tease me all the time, so I thought I would tease you back. 
All right, so Amy, we got a couple minutes left. Talk about why your huts are important for people who haven't seen them or even stayed a night in them. Talk about that. Okay, um, the bubble huts to me and to others, the reason they're important is because they give you the ability to sleep under the stars. Mm -hmm. um, it's an incredible experience, especially if, you know, one of my things of, you know, moving to Phoenix, you know, I realized being with my daughter and her younger friends, a lot of these kids, because they're in the bigger cities, they never get an opportunity to even see the stars or they're very dim. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I'm passionate about the stars and about the cosmos. Yeah. And so it was, it's just an opportunity that I have to give back to the others in the world, an opportunity to be experienced <coughs> sleeping under the stars in a unique way. And especially for women, who love the great outdoors like I do, but you know, you don't want the bugs. You want the comforts that you would get at home or at a nice hotel. Yeah, and the biggest bugs I've ever seen have been in Florida, Tosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll carry you away. Oh man, tell me about oh, it. Oh my God, the, bu uh, yeah, the, the bugs there scared me. The first time I was in Florida, I was like, I was in Orlando and like, I, I don't even know what these flying things were. I was like, what? Because <laughs> we don't have bugs like that in California. <laughs> Um, so, Amy, are yes. these um, are these something that people can buy themselves, or is it more like you know businesses like companies? Um, I work with both. I've worked with individuals, um, but I'm working more and more <coughs> with companies. But yeah, a lot of the people, you know, I've worked with people who say, okay, well, I want to put one or three in my backyard, you know. So I work with everyone. So are they affordable for, you know, the average person to get, or is it? Um, it all depends on what you think. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they start out at close to $5,000 is the starting rate. And then they can go up from there because of how I design them and how many yeah, you want them. Yeah. Huh? The size, depending on the size and like what yeah. all. Yeah. And how many yeah. rooms you're going to have in it and what kind of design details we put into it for you. And you know, because we make them with real doors, we make them with frames and zippers. Wow. It just depends. Yes. Yeah, so. But they're easily trans, like you can, like once you've got it, it's easy to like, you know, you know, bring it somewhere with you. Like you. Oh, it. <laughs> no, it's too heavy. <laughs> they're heavy. You can start out at 150 pounds and can wow. go up to over two. Wow. Have it like on a, some kind of rolling device or. You're going to have to have a big dolly. <laughs> What's yeah. <laughs> something you're going to backpack in? I don't imagine. Wow. Because they're meant to be more of a semi-permanent mm -hmm. structure yeah, I got rather you. than your weekend camp. So do you have people that go in and, and install it? I'm actually, I am working on building a team to go and doing that. Right now, what I've been doing up to this point is we consult them. We go through, prior to our clients setting them up, we go through a whole meeting where we tell them how to do it step by step by step. Because it is easy to do for the most mm -hmm. part. The hardest thing I think would be building your the, the deck, you know. But putting up the tent itself is easy. I can't even put up a regular tent. I would know. I would. I would need that that team of the whole. Team I would come people. help. Yeah, I'll come help. I just told you. I told you guys about my college story. We put up a tent and it fell on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we will we'll make sure it's safe. <laughs> All right, talk, Tosh. Talk about what you got coming up. Well, uh, well, the, the recording of my music video, honestly, it's in two weeks. Um, I'm doing two shoot dates. Uh, one day I'm, I'm <laughs> shooting like a beach sunset party and uh, I'm buying wow. like these tiki torches that I'm setting up at the beach. So it's going to be very, very cool. And then the second day is um, a choreography um, that uh, it's going to be a dance and we're like kind of shooting it a little bit all over Miami and like cool looking places. So um, that's what I'm working on right now. That is my, my main, my main project at the moment. So yeah, just super excited to get it started. I've been stressed out because I've been like looking for outfits, making sure I have people that are going to go learning the choreography. It's a lot, but it's a lot of fun. I, I'm honestly enjoying like at the whole journey. And Angelica is going to join you, right? Yeah. So Angelica, oh my God, it's so funny because she's like, oh, I'm planning on going to Miami. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like when? And she's like, oh, uh, March 11th. And I'm like, shut the be up because I'm filming my music video and like you're going to be part of it. So, <laughs> oh, how cool. So, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm excited to have her have her on. And I think her cousin is actually going to do my makeup because her cousin is a makeup artist here in Miami. So that should be that should be a fun time. That's pretty cool. Oh, and talk about talk about Elaine Goodlad doing your makeup. Oh, yeah, she was amazing. I got so many compliments from everyone, like from the pictures that, that, that my makeup was phenomenal and flawless. And she really did an amazing job. And it was like, I felt like I think it was like 30 minutes that she did my makeup. And it was I it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So Elaine, if you're looking, thank you so much, because that was you literally made me like just super flawless. It was beautiful, beautiful. And I'm actually wearing uh, I don't know if you can see it well, but this is from her uh, brand. I bought it. It's like a cute crop top, uh, bless her sweater. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I got this from her. Uh, that's from her company. So yeah. And then Rachel, talk about what you're about ready to go to. Well, we've got the rodeo coming up. So I've got, <clears throat> like, I couldn't, <laughs> <Cowboy boots. laughs> Yay. Yeah, got to pull out all the bling, you know, because it's, yeah, that's, we get all decked out for rodeo time. And that's, you know, I, like I said, the trail riders are going to be coming in, I think, Thursday. And it's crazy because, I mean, you know, Houston's one of the largest cities in the United States. And it, there we have traffic like like L.A. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the day, like, <laughs> you see these wagons and horses. It's, it's mm -hmm people that have i mean it's it's incredible it's incredible so anyway that's starting and um this weekend is going to be the uh, barbecue cook-off which is you know a lot of fun it's, you know how much money texans and you know people have here and it's the biggest companies and they put up these big tents and you know if you can get in you get free barbecue free um drinks Yum. open bar it's so much fun it's so much fun and they is have a big only, old you know is this only for a weekend or is this like the barbecue month? cook off is um yeah it's for the weekend i think just like the yeah it's like for a few days and then it's the rodeo stuff mm -hmm. so um yeah a lot of fun and oh, i need um, to put that in my calendar to go to texas when oh, that happens a, yeah it's a blast yeah we get together have a good time <laughs> we'll drink like classy, I said, but sometime, dirty. I think sometime yeah. in June. Yeah, sometime in June, we're going to your house, Rachel. I decided already. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ready for you. <laughs> and Amy's coming with us. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona is not too far. Okay. So really quickly, we're going to be heading to Beloit International Film Festival. Um, that should be fun. We'll talk about it next week. But Beloit, here we come. Chicago, here we come. We're going to Linda Steele's gym. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll see you that. So I have to say this. If you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours. I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>